VTTA. Hell yeah. VTTA tokens, basic usage. Hey, let's look at VTTA tokens and basic usage. Let's start up the editor by clicking VTTA tokens on the window head above each given character sheet. This will load up all the necessary layers for its basic usage model and prepares the stage quite a bit for you. So if you're really not interested in sophisticated token but want to get things done real quick, this is the best thing you can do. Click on the preview pane on the left and adjust the actor image by dragging, mouse wheeling to zoom and holding shift and mouse wheel to rotate the actor profile image until you like what you see and hit save. The token will be uploaded for you and is at your disposal instantly. But let's go a little bit back and see what is the control pane on the right hand side providing for you. First we can see that there are three layers. One, two, three. Each layer has a thumbnail to provide a visual identification for you. So you can see the second layer is clearly the profile image of the actor dwarf. And here we do have the token frame as a preview. And this layer 3 seems to be a wide squared image. Now VTA tokens tries to support you in your daily DM job by making certain assumptions. I think you will load the token frame on top and right beneath it you would load the actor profile image and if we look at the profile image we can see that the border color of it is clearly a white. So let's create a background layer from that color found that is white in order to allow like translations to the very border where the image of the actor ends but seamlessly the canvas seems to be endless. So this alleviates many, many, many clicks for you by just making these assumptions that that might be a good idea. What else does VTDA tokens assumes to be a good idea? We cannot continue without talking a little bit about masks. And you can see here each layer, that's the thumbnail of the contents of this layer, and this is the mask that VTDA tokens generates based on this image layer. Now what it does, and let's remove all these other layers to only have the token. What it does, it starts at the center and shoots rays in all directions until it hits something solid that is a non-transparent pixel. Then he averages the distance from the center and it receives a circular mask. So this is the algorithm working right now. Quick info, if you have token frames with a drop shadow, for example, outside here, this algorithm should uh, work way better than VTDA tokenizer, which started at the outside and went inside. So this is a big improvement for everyone who uses token frames with drop shadows. Now these masks are generated, but what do they do actually? Let's have a look at something I prepared here. So we do have an input image and we want to cut out certain things. We do that by creating a mask. In this case, it's circular. And when we, des when, when we want to decide which pixels to omit and which one to draw, we first draw the mask onto the target and then we draw the image onto it. But we will only transfer these pixel that will hit a black one on the way to the target. Everyone, every pixel that will go to a white pixel will not be drawn. So black means let's draw this pixel. Non-black or transparent means let's do not draw this pixel. So this is masking. And we use this quite extensively when combining the layers here. You see the circular mask has been generated by the algorithm. And what you can see in this control is that this layer, layer number two, uses a mask. The icon is goldish. And it's a little bit hard to read, but that's a circle with a one in it. So 
use for this layer a mask and take the mask from layer number one. This is a circle. And if we display the layer again, we can see that it really works. So first the circle or black circle or mask is drawn and then the avatar image is drawn inside this mask, resulting in a circular cutout. And we can actually see that this is indeed happening because we can edit each mask. I implemented a mask editor when you click on here, you can see the input image and everything that is um, like check, checkboard pattern is transparent. So I can now create a new mask by just dragging like regular drawing operations. We add by dragging with the left mouse button and we remove by holding shift by, while doing that. And we can see that this is actually working. So let's, let's leave it at that. And what do you think? Will we see a different output? Let's see. No, we don't. Because of this layer is drawn first and this is drawn at top. Even now, if we uh, hide this layer, we will actually see something. Now we can see the edits we just made are applied, but this layer will be drawn on top of that, hiding these. We can continue to over here. And if you hit apply now, it's still not seen because we need to go on the edge here. Now we can see that the mask is applied and actually does change the target or result image. So this way we can combine a clever combination of masking different portions of, of our images in order to decide which portions do we actually want to display and which do we want to hide. Now this is masking and again, each layer provides a mask, but that doesn't mean that it needs to be consumed. For example, we got a layer of a square and it's provided by layer number two, but none of those other layers is using this layer. We can change that. For example, we can use, uh, configure layer number three, the background image, to not use this circular edited layer, but we can cycle through that by clicking on it. And then you can see this, this preview is already changing because it's now using this mask and it's all black. That means draw everything. And if we edit that, and let's use the mouse wheel to uh, ramp up the um, brush size here. And let's remove that. And let's add. Hit apply. And then we can see that is actually happening here. So let's hide this and this or this. You can see the white square is a, this mask is applied to the white square and only this part is shining through. So we can edit to our liking and the, the implications of that is your creativity is basically unbound. So this is super nice to have. You don't need to use it as I showed you because the generator default is normally good enough. But you can, you really create sophisticated things. And I already released a video depicting two demonstration or three demos of how you can use that to create stunning effects. Now we already use this one here. Like I can select a layer, I can reduce opacity, I can hide and show certain layers. These following up controls are used for these basic transformations, scaling, rotating, and uh, translating. That means flip the layer, so it will be looking in a different direction, reset all transformations, and lock this layer, so no transformations will happen at all. Sometimes we want to, and let's close this and restart tokens to get a fresh start. Sometimes we would want to clone a layer, perhaps in order to um, show a different portion or make him make him wear two clubs or maces instead of just one 
we can clone and copy certain layer stuff. And we can, of course, delete layers if we think, oh, now that's too much. So these are the basic controls for each layer quickly explained. You can, of course, sorry, I forgot that. You can, of course, change and, uh, the, the order of the layers by using these arrows, up and down arrows, by clicking them. You can change the order of drawn. It will always be drawing from the top to the middle to the top layer. So this directly influences uh, the, the outcome. And you can add layers from different sources. You can add a layer from the active profile image. You can browse uh, from your local hard drive. Uh, you can add a URL that you want to load an image from, or you can pick something already on your foundry server. You can add a layer based on a certain color. For example, this color picker pops up. You select the layer, uh, the color, and you hit enter. And you have a new layer based on that color. And you can even change that afterwards by clicking that on the thumbnail. That is something only the tint layer support. If you're curious, you can download the image directly to your hard drive. And that's about the ways you can influence and create stuff. Now, after you created stuff, you want to save it to the Foundry server. So you will see in the lower area of the right hand side, which token is currently assigned to this actor. So you can decide if I hit save, I will overwrite this with this. Just a quick reminder of what you are doing and which you, a file name to use to actually save the token. The file name portion is generated um, by VTT tokens too, according to an algorithm which is rather simple yet delicate. First, it will look at the actual configured token file name and it tries to use that. For example, if you generate a new actor, Foundry will use the actor image as an actor token image too. So, Per default, it would not make sense to use that exact URL because it will overwrite the actor image too. In that case, it will try to save it next to the actor. Let's look at that in detail because I think it's better to see, to understand. We do have this gobble and it has its profile image, its actor image in uploads avatars mockmerge.png. So now when we edit the token, it will try to save it right next to it. So it will use uploads avatars mockmerge.token.png. So it inserts .token, changes the file extensions to PNG and it's done. If you save it and if you browse it, you will see now the original actor image and next to it the token. So that's the second default if you cannot use the configured token image path for whatever reason. If all else fails, it will use the configured target directory for actor related images. So for example, if you have an actor and it draws its image from, well, now I don't have anything here, Upload something really quick. So I am in user data. So I'm a user. I'm using the graphical user interface and I'm allowed to store images directly in the user data root directory. So let's select that. I'm allowed to do that. Modules are not allowed to do that. So I'm not allowed to create a mess in your foundry server by uploading everything into your user data root directory. So VTT tokens fails to save the token right next to the avatar. So it will use the configured default and create a, uh, now we have, well, forget that uh, because we have already configured something, it will use this. But if there wasn't anything, it would use the configured um, default and append characters and gobble.token.png. You will see when you use that. 
So it, as a last resort, it will use the fallback you configured. In all other cases, it will try to replace uh, save at the configured token file. If that fails, it will try to save it next to the profile image. So that's about basic usage. That's about what is a mask and how can we use it and how to add certain layers, how to transform them. And let's cut it from here and we will see each other soon when we talk about wildcard tokens. Take care.